Hi Reefers and welcome back to Mindy's Coral Reef. I'm Mindy and today I want to talk to you about the best beginner corals to choose when deciding to take that chance and switch your system over to an actual coral reef system. So hold on tight because here we go. I've had so many people ask me questions about which are the best corals to choose when it comes to seahorses. And when answering those questions, a lot of the corals are the same corals that you'd recommend when it comes to beginner corals when switching your system over to a coral reef system. So here I thought, why not do a video on the actual beginner corals and kill two birds with one stone. All right, so all the corals that you're gonna see that I'm gonna show you are all corals that I actually have in my reef systems now. They're all corals that have flourished and grown regardless of my lighting conditions being not so great, uh, the parameters not being perfect and fluctuating, and my nutrient levels not being the best. So these corals are a little bit hardier and they're not so finicky. But I will say this, regardless of the fact that they are hardier corals, you still have to pay close attention to the parameters and the water conditions for them to do well. Because if the nutrient levels are extremely high, the lighting is just extremely way too low or just not good, and the parameters are extremely off, they're not gonna do well regardless of how hardy they are. And I will say this, my opinion for beginner corals are more on the LPS side. To me, SPS is more of an advanced coral because the lighting and the water parameters need to be more spot on for that type of coral. So let's get on to the fun. The toadstool leather coral is a peaceful coral and can be placed anywhere in the tank but should have enough space for growth since it has the ability to grow fast. It requires moderate to high lighting and medium water flow. Most of the toadstool's nutrients come from photosynthesis, but they also benefit from food such as microplankton, brine shrimp, and filter feeding foods. Zoanthids are another easy to care for beginner coral. They are considered semi-aggressive and can sting other corals, so they should be given enough space for growth. Some zoanthids are more difficult than others and will need additional feeding over and above photosynthesis. Pallies are in the zoanthid family and are even easier to care for. Zoanthids contain a substance called pallitoxin that can make a person very sick so these corals should be very carefully handled. These corals also tend to carry a lot of pests, so dipping may be required at times for them to fully open. The green nephthia is also another very peaceful coral. They thrive in a variety of lighting conditions and satisfy a majority of the nutritional requirements by means of photosynthesis. They are very similar to the Kenya tree. Both the Nymphia and the Kenya like moderate to high lighting, medium to strong water flow, and can be placed anywhere within the tank. My personal experience with Kenyas is that they can grow fast and frag throughout your fish tank. The pink anthalia is one of the fastest growing corals in the hobby. It's very hardy, can be kept under a wide range of lighting, and are very tolerant of water conditions that would be unsuitable for some of the more delicate corals. Medium to high water flow is recommended, but it's not needed for the coral to do well. The Devil's Hand is another very peaceful coral. It can be placed anywhere within the tank but will require plenty of space around it for growth. It does best at medium to high lighting with medium to strong water flow. The devil's hand is very easy to maintain 
since a majority of its nutritional needs come from photosynthesis, but it will also benefit from microplankton, brine shrimp, and filter feeding foods. Green star polyps are described as an encrusting coral since they are easy coral to maintain that can grow rapidly to the area surrounding it in an established aquarium. They are a peaceful coral that will not harm the corals around it and are able to retract their polyps at the response of predators. Encrusting zania is very similar to the green star polyp in their characteristics of their growth rate and the fact that their polyps can retract. This coral can actually be considered a pest since its growth rate is so fast that it covers everything surrounding it including other corals. Yellow polyps are another very easy coral to care for. They're considered semi-aggressive since they can sting other corals but their sting is not considered strong. They reproduce quite rapidly throughout the tank by a process called budding where the base of one splits into two to form another. They can be placed anywhere within the tank, require moderate lighting, and a medium water flow. Feeding is quite easy since they get some from photosynthesis, but they also require some from microplankton, brine shrimp, and other filter feeding foods. My last beginner coral is the mushroom. There's many different kinds of mushrooms, and it's always important to be very careful when selecting which type of mushroom you're purchasing. This is the one coral on my list that I would be very cautious with in a seahorse tank due to them being unpredictable. Mushrooms are considered semi-aggressive due to them being able to sting other corals, but I've seen situations where an actual fish has been eaten by a mushroom. Most of the common and easy to care for mushrooms are hardy, and relatively easy to maintain. They multiply quickly throughout the tank, like medium lighting and low to medium water flow. They feed on photosynthesis, microplankton, and filter feeding foods. Alright guys, so that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, leave the comments below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you're not familiar with my Patreon page, please check it out. Patreon is a network where I can share my creative side privately and you can show your support. What's great about Patreon is it's really easy to use, it takes a minute to set up, you can cancel at any time, and you can set a max limit so you only spend the amount that you want. You can find the link to my Patreon page in the information section of this video. I appreciate each and everyone who supports me on my Patreon page more than I can say in words. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate all the positive feedback and I will see you again on the next video. I want to give a huge thank you to JML, Wayne, Kirk, Jamie, and Constance on this video.